This conference will now be recorded. Pam, we've got Ron, Matt, Kevin, and Sharon. Um, so once Hello. Pam is here, hey Pam. Hi. Hey Pam, how are you? We finally see you. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else there? Yeah, we've got everyone's here, Pam. So you are good oh. to start when you are ready. Oh, okay. Hold on one second. One, I'm sorry, one second. I, uh, okay. In pursuant of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL chapter 30A, paragraph 20, the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Harwich Board of Health is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. I call the meeting to order. Um, everybody saw the minutes of the last meeting. I think we have, um, do we have two minutes or just one? Just one, December oh, okay. 15th. Everybody had a chance to read it. Uh, do I hear a motion to pass the minutes? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. Sharon? Sharon? All right, I'll make a motion to, to, to uh, accept the minutes. Okay. Um, and uh, second? Seconded. Okay. So we have to go through everybody. And um, Sharon, you uh, agree to pass the minutes? Yes. And Matt, you agree to pass the minutes? Yes. And Kevin, you agree to pass the minutes? Yes. And um, Ron, you agree to pass the minutes? Yes. So the minutes were passed unanimously. Um, we go, do we do the uh, so order? Pam, Megan's not here, but I, I can present her COVID report through okay. the board. Great. All right, thank you. So I'll just read um, her latest report, um, which was dated January 11th. To date, there have been a total of 350 cases of COVID-19 in the town of Harwich. As of today, we are following 44 active cases uh, in Harwich residents, not including Wingate, the largest caseload we have seen at one time to date. These active cases include household spread that started from gatherings or travel over the school break However, many cases are from unknown origin. Harwich has been moved back into the red, which designates us as a high risk community. This designation is made when a community of our size reaches a positivity rate of over 5% and has had more than 25 positive cases in a two week period. We have had a positivity rate of 5.15% in 55 new cases over the last two weeks. Over the weekend, Barnstable County's three-day new case tally set another new record. 481 cases were recorded between January 8th and January 10th. Governor Baker announced that the tempor temporary extension of order number 59 will continue until noon on January 24th. This order limits capacity inside most businesses to 25%, including restaurants, as well as reduces the gathering limitations to 10 people inside and 25 people outside. This gathering limits include private and public property. Businesses that fall into this order must also close to the public at 9.30 p.m. COVID vaccine clinics have been set up for first responders. Police, fire, harbor masters, 
and private EMS company employees performing, performing COVID-facing jobs are eligible to receive their first dose of vaccine in this current phase. We are receiving many calls from residents wondering how they can get a vaccine. If you are in phase one, your employer is responsible for ordering and distributing vaccine, or you can attend one of the mass vaccination sites that the state has set up. Once we get to phase two, we will take direction from the Department of Public Health on how to set up our clinics. We are not taking appointments or requests for appointments at this time. When we know more information, we will alert the public. Many pharmacies will also be providing the COVID vaccine. Harwich relies on both the VNA and the Barnstable County Department of Public Health for vaccine distribution. The county has agreed to be a vaccine depot for towns on the Cape. This means that the county will receive, store, and distribute COVID vaccine to individual towns. When the Department of Public Health indicates that this, it is time to hold public clinics Harwich will hold clinics for our residents in a similar setting as to our drive-through flu clinics. We may or may not regionalize with the neighboring town to hold the clinic. This is still, be, uh, still to be determined. More information on the vaccine plan can be found at mass.gov slash info dash details slash when can I get a COVID-19 vaccine. Outer Cape Health Services has announced that they are extending the free asymptomatic testing for people through February 28, 2021. This is the rapid antigen test and is not valid for the travel order compliance. PCR testing is also available here. For testing options at Outer Cape, please call 508-905-2888 in advance to make a testing appointment. Testing is available in other locations seven days a week through Cape Cod Healthcare. Call the community testing line at 508-534-7103 to make an appointment. We continue to see community spread of COVID-19 in Harwich. Outer Cape Health Services has reported that 60% of all the positive rapid tests that they performed have been from asymptomatic individuals. It is so important to limit close contact with other people, including children. Sleepovers, playdates, dinner parties are all known to spread the virus from seemingly healthy people to other people who work with the public. Teenagers spread it to parents who bring it to work with and infect others. The cycle needs to break. We need to do a better job of stopping the spread. The vaccine will help, but social distancing and wearing a mask are immediate and effective ways to do your part to stop the spread. And that is Megan's report for last week. If anyone has any questions, I can answer anything for you. Uh, no, not necessarily any questions, but if anybody is asking the asymptomatic testing for travel, the PCR at Outer Cape Health, uh, it's 110 bucks. Not you know just uh we we are testing if they pay for that ahead of time and then the the free one is yeah it, it's going through February and we expect it to get approved for longer it seems to be in pretty good demand. Great, thank you. I get my second vaccine tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> How'd you feel after the first one? I felt great. Really, we we haven't had a lot of uh, a really any you know with side effects a couple of rashes but the one thing we have seen is that people who had covid tend to have a little bit of like a rebound symptoms not full blown but mm. little fever feeling crummy day or two and then they they you know they rebound back but seemingly people who had covid already and are now getting vaccinated tend to have a little bit of a bounce back little immune response you know but overall, there's nothing major. Nobody's had any major reactions whatsoever. I, I, I immunized 100 people last week myself, so I've, <laughs> we've been busy yeah, over there. Making yeah, history. <laughs> it feels good to be a part of the, the solution, finally. Yeah, it really, absolutely. It finally Thank you for all like your hard work. Yeah. yeah. I have a quick question. Um, what vaccine are, we, are they using here? Moderna uh, or Pfizer? We're, at Outer Cape Health, we're using the Moderna vaccine. Oh, all right. Okay. The, the existing clinics right now for the first responders is the Moderna as well. 
Cape Cod Healthcare at the hospital, I believe, was the only one to receive the Pfizer because they have the cold yeah. storage. They have the Pfizer, yeah. All right. Yeah, this is my vaccine too to the fire department already. Um, I was wondering how Harwich is keeping track of, you know, it's of the first responders. Um, yeah, well, not really the, the that, but as a general, like the general population of Harwich, if it's being, you know, for who's being, you know, vaccinated, what percentage of the town is. Yep. So once we start in the other phases, we'll definitely be keeping track of that. Right now, we're still in the first responders. Um, I, I personally don't have the data for how many we've vaccinated at this point, but um, I'm sure we could compile that at some point. I believe the county has been keeping track at least of, of the Cape that they are going to have statistics out soon. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, I know that you wanted to talk about the budget. Pam, if you wanted to go down, you could do the permit list. Um, oh, okay. It's a pretty lengthy list. Yeah. Um, that's an easy one for you to do until Megan gets back. Okay. Megan? The Board of Health meeting giving a COVID update, so we usually don't have both meetings on um, the same night. Um, so there's a permit list. Do I hear a motion to, uh, yeah, it was very lengthy, <laughs> uh, a motion to uh, pass the permits I'll make a motion to pass the permit list. <laughs> Sharon makes the motion. Do I hear a second? A second the motion. I'll make a second. I think Kevin made a second. So all in agreement. Sharon? Uh, Aye. Yes. Matt? Yes. Ron? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And myself. So all in agreement for the permits to pass. Uh, I don't know. Um, does anybody want to talk about anything? Well, we just wait for. Nothing. There's quite a few patients at Cape Cod Hospital with the COVID. Um, and quite a few staff members had reactions to the um, vaccine where they needed to call in sick, some of them for a couple of days, but it's so was that random. The hospital or was, that the, uh, was that the hospital? The staff at the hospital. Now, were they taking the Moderna or were they taking the Pfizer one? Pfizer. Pfizer, okay. So I don't know if that makes any difference. I have no clue if they're going to keep. Uh, we had, like I said, two staff members with like a silver dollar sized rash. And then the one staff member who had had COVID at one point had a bounce back reaction, but nothing major yeah. at the same time. Yeah, well, that's well, we're getting it. That's good. Good first step. Sharon, what are your feelings on the vaccine? <laughs> with all your research. <laughs> well, I will take whatever comes up first. Um, I, I'm wondering what will happen with the J&J &J vaccine. I personally like that one better. <laughs> That's my personal. Be a, that would, it would be a, just a single shot, wouldn't it? Yes, but yes, it's a different it platform. It's a different platform. It's more yeah. traditional. Let's put it that way. It's more what? Traditional way of, of um, the platform that's used to generate the vaccine itself is more traditional with the adenovirus. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, so I, I guess if I had my druthers, I guess I'm a little traditionalist when it comes to that. But uh, I think whatever comes up, I, I think it, it's worthwhile, even if it's not designed to prevent you from getting it. Um, at my age, if it prevents me from getting admitted to a hospital, I'll take it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm 
but um, I, I haven't done, I, I don't go anywhere or do anything. I go to the grocery store at bizarre hours <laughs> when it's <laughs> empty. Um, other than that, I haven't really done anything. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious for the, uh, I'm anxious for the vaccine. I'm hoping that um, they do start to allow people to get it maybe earlier than let's say phase two, if we've got enough people that are turning down the vaccine, you know, rather than let it go to waste. I don't know how they would handle that at some point to say, you know, at a certain time frame, if we're not using it now, whoever, yeah, I don't know how they, I don't know how they're going to handle it here. But yeah, I mean, I, the I really scale it go to really waste. You've done that. And, and and on a grand scale, because really that's what it's going to take. It most of the places, if you ask around, they'll, they'll tell you we we need the the people hours to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. I know if my staff, we, me and one other person, and I'm talking, checked them in, screened them, got their temperatures checked, got the shot in the arm, had them wait 15 minutes to be observed, got it all documented, everything. We did, we did. 10 people an hour for four hours last Friday. And that was is just there, two of us. Is there, is there any way that um, uh, someone that's not necessarily giving the shot that could do some of the paperwork? In other words. Yeah, and that's what I've like, I've already spoken to my bosses. If we have uh, me and the one other girl, one of our patient service representatives who was helping me with it, cause she's really good at the scheduling aspect of things. So she was making sure People walked out of there with their second shot appointment in hand uh -huh. um, while I was monitoring and getting shots in arms. But we we said yeah, it took two of us to do 40 in in 10 an hour. But it would take it would not take the same number of people proportionally to scale it up. We uh -huh. have such a good system. We feel worked out. I, I felt if you handed me five people one nurse to document, one nurse to put it in an arm, somebody drawing it up and somebody checking in, we could probably, I'd, I'd estimate, do a, a hundred an hour easy if they, but that that type of availability isn't work amongst our staff. Would you need, would you need a nurse to do some of the paperwork? Um, no. Um, and and I, I don't know the logistics. I'd, I mean, that would have to go run through Deb Gavrin. She's our, our lawyer at work about having, you know, people come in, but no, it doesn't take literally the only thing that a nurse has to do. There's two, th and technically you could use a medical assistant to draw up, but the nurse would have to administer and observe. And, and you could even have a medical assistant administer. The nurse has to be there to observe for 15 minutes afterwards. But aside from that, a, a medical assistant or a nurse can both administer a vaccine and a, a monkey could enter it into the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Any, yeah, it, it doesn't take, people don't have to be medically trained, which is weird, like you really wish, you know, we could step things up on a larger scale and it's been brought up and I, I kind of waiting with bated breath to see what happens. Yeah. I think if they're going to try to roll this out to, to a, a larger population, maybe a little quicker than they had originated or originally thought, you're going to need, I'm going to call him a paper pusher. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I was, I was immunizing a group from Bayada Home Care and they were, people were offering, if you guys need help and they scale this up, please let us know. We'll come in, we'll do it. So we got other organizations that we're starting to immunize that are offering assistance. It's just the, the finances have got to be there and the vaccine has to be there. And I mean, people are willing to do it. I got doctors who are volunteering to come and work on a Saturday for free to help monitor people, but it's it's they just not quite they, happening yet. Have they actually thought about actually just when you talk about the extra money to do it, people that would volunteer to do it, not for pay? I I wish they had. I know it's it's becoming more and more apparent because more and more people are offering help. Um, who do you have to go to? to who? How do you move the, it the up? The person we all have to go through is Deb Gavrin. She she is the lawyer, and she really pulls all the strings there as far as the legality of having other people come in and helping. Um, so Deb Gavrin would be the one to speak to, and then Pat Nadel, the CEO. Um, as far as the the nursing staff, there's 
there's nursing staff willing to to work Saturdays. I don't normally work Fridays, but now that Jack is in kindergarten, <laughs> I'm actually going in on Fridays to immunize people. So I, you know, I'm, I'm going in on my days off just to get it done because it, it needs to be done. Um, Pam, do you want me to at least start with Megan's memo for the budget? And then if anyone has any questions, um, sure. you want to do that, save a little bit of time. Yep. Um, so attached, you'll find the fiscal year 22 budget request for the health department and board of health in order to level funding, funding these budgets and accounts for contractual salary benefit increases, as well as two cell phones, expenses were adjusted as described below. My vision for the future of the health department is to add a full-time health inspector to the department. The department is currently stretched thin due to COVID. However, we have the need for additional fund, uh, for additional help before the pandemic. Recognizing the extreme budgeting required to maintain level funding for fiscal year 22, I am instead requesting to maintain my current budget and rearrange the way it is used to allow for a seasonal part-time health inspector position of 14 hours a week. At this time, we have one year round 19 hour per week inspector and from July to December had a one day a week temporary or seasonal inspector to witness soil tests. This temporary employee was previously paid out of the other purchased services. However, he became employed by Harwich Council on Aging on a part-time basis and so could not be paid as a contractor. Instead of contracting out services, I am proposing to reduce the other purchased services and keep the SNW line level funded. I propose to hire a second part-time health inspector on a seasonal basis of May through October, two days per week. This will cover our busiest time when we typically need the contract services. In addition to the contract services, other purchase services has typically been used for wellness programs for our school aged kids. Fiscal year 21 had not utilized this line item due to COVID and the reduced need to perform inspections as well as CARES Act money converting, covering any overtime incurred from the extra workload. A 50% reduction in this line will allow us to continue wellness programs and not be detrimental to our operation if our part-time S&W are level funded. Due subscriptions and in-state travel has been reduced by 37%. With the current remote environment we're in, I believe the traditional in-person conferences will be limited in the future. This will save money in both mileage and conference fees. Reducing this line should not be detrimental to our operations. Cell phones have become necessary due to the remote atmosphere we're working in. If CARES Act funding continues, perhaps this item could be paid from that. In any case, the director and senior health agent are often in the field and should have cell phone uh, availability. She also attached uh, the proposed budget as well. You can see there's a highlighted area of a 50% reduction of the other purchase services, as well as a 37% reduction in dues, subscription, and state travel. Um, so it's a, a level budget from last year to this year. She also broke it down by line item in the following pages. So if, um, they agree with that. It would be a good idea. And Megan will be back on too if there's any questions. Um, she she wrote the budget, so she knows it much better than I do. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Nope. Okay. Any other discussion for anything? Okay. If no one has any questions, you, you can still vote on it. Um, we don't have to wait unless anyone wants to talk to Megan about it beforehand. Oh, we need a vote to uh, pass for it? Yes. Oh, oh I thought it was just information. Okay. Um, do I hear a vote to agree with the uh, new budget outlined as Megan uh, gave us, that Megan gave us? 
I would I would have make a motion to, to accept the budget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sharon's making the motion. The second. I'll, I'll second, second the motion. <laughs> um, okay, Kevin will second it. All in favor, Sharon? Yes. Um, Matt? Yes. Ron? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. I agree, so motion's passed. Everyone agrees with the budget. Hey guys. Hi. I'm back. Hi Sorry I'm late. I was just doing the update. Um, and I'm sure Katie's answered the same questions that the selectman had about vaccine clinics. Um, so we have a few minutes before seven. Were you able to go over everything, the COVID bud the COVID stuff and the budget stuff? Yes. Okay. Yep. And those. Okay. And how about the minutes? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's all done. Yes. Minutes are approved. Okay. Um, Permits are all done. Perm wow, you guys are fast. Quick, quick night. <laughs> nice. Um, okay. So we have everybody is a oh, caller one must be you, Ron. Probably. Okay. All right. Good. Um, any questions about the budget request that I am nope. providing the selectmen this nope. budget season? Okay. Good. Um, while I was waiting to get on the other meeting, I did hear what, someone ask a question about how many vaccinations have been given out. Um, yes. During today's health agent call, Deirdre from the county, she's the public health nurse, said that they'd, they, she thinks they've given out about 700 just at the Orleans facility. Uh, so that's that's pretty good. Good start. It's a start, and they will be. Um, they've signed up for you know weekly allotments and they they do a a weekly uh survey to see how many shots they've given how many they anticipate giving in the next week and then a shipment of vaccine gets delivered to the county for for these clinics how much how much comes to the clinic i mean how how is that determined um so when you sign up to be a clinic so when deirdre from the county signs up to offer the vaccine she has a an idea of how many shots she needs to to give so for first responders all of the police and fire departments were required to submit a, a, a count of how many people were going to get vaccinated so she okay. had those numbers and was able to order the right amount of vaccine okay Um, and then going forward, it's going to be based on how, many, how much staff and how much time the clinics can be staffed. So if they know they can do 200 shots an hour, but they only have six hours that week to do shots, they'll just fill, fill those slots accordingly. Why, why is it limited to six hours? It was just an example. Um, to, however, however many staff members they have to staff the clinics. I see. Now, before you came back on the phone, they talked about volunteers. Uh, what? What's? How does that um, figure in? Um, in so, words, the, could, the, could they extend the clinic hours if they had more volunteers, or how's that work? Um, possibly. Conversation before you came on, um, Sharon was asking Kevin about how um, someone could volunteer at Outer Cape to to assist them um, ah. with their their vaccinating. 
Well, in, in general, volunteers would have to be vetted through some kind of an organization. Um, so the ones, it. the ones that, um, that the county are running are their volunteers are medical reserve corps volunteers who have volunteered to the medical reserve corps and have been had their background checks done and had all of their credentials checked. Um, you can't just volunteer to to be a volunteer. You you have to be credentialed and and have um, the backing of a of an organization. Wouldn't the doctors who volunteered wouldn't they would they have would they be credentialed doctors and nurses who volunteered? If they go through the med yes, if they if they volunteer through the medical reserve corps, yes. Okay. Yes. So if you're interested in volunteering your time, you can contact the medical reserve corps, and they do like an onboarding session for new volunteers, and they have orientations and certain um, things they have to you'd have to do present your CPR certifications and um, do some basic training kind of thing. But they're always okay. looking for, for more volunteers. Okay. Um, moving on to new business then? Yes. Okay. Um, new business, we have a hearing for Fuller. 26 Kevin Road to reconsider the order of conditions granted on February 11th, 2014, which indicated there is to be no increase in habitable space, flow design, number of bedrooms, one bedroom maximum, loft slash storage not to be used as a bedroom, storage area accessed by ship's ladder only, and square footage to the dwelling. The applicant is requesting to change the ship's ladder access to an upstairs storage area, um, change out the ship's ladder and put in a set of stairs. Okay, um, I uh, open hearing. Somebody here? Yes, I am attorney William Kroll from oh, Howard okay. Court. And if if I can, uh, Adam Chairperson, um, your last name? My last name? Yes, it says Dell on the screen. Oh, it's Howell. How do you spell it? Harlow? It's H-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Howell, yes. I, I know your face. I just needed to know your name. And nope, that's okay. I wanted to know the other members. Is it uh, Sharon Flager? Flager? And Kevin DuPont? Matt Antoine? Antoine, yep. Antoine. Um, and Ron? Dal Gallo. Dal Gallo? Correct. Okay. So we would have. Uh, one, two, three, four, five people voting? Yes. All right. And for a, a vote to pass, is it three out of five? Yes. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, it's just, a, yes, you're right. It's just, just a majority vote. Okay. Thank you. I just want to know who the players are. Um, and we have also, if they want to come on, uh, we have Dr. Fuller and his wife, Robin. Um, and we have Robert Stello, who is the contractor. Um, yes, I'm here. Hi, Rob. And Dr. Fuller? I'm here um, as well. I, I don't know how to make it show the picture of me. All right. Um, if there's something on your screen that says camera down at the bottom. Yes, it does. You click on camera. Oh, got it. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Same with you, Rob. Um, I tag person that I'm not. There we go. Okay. I'm on. <laughs> We're not seeing you yet. Um, you're not? No.
click on it, it says camera. It shows me here. I'm not, um, I don't know. There we go. Uh, you got me now? Okay. See you. Yes. Sorry about Bob, that. Bob yeah. and I and, and, and Colin are from the same generation, and we're not, it's not second nature to us because we're <laughs> over five years old. Um, <laughs> so when in doubt, I need, ask I need a hammer for this thing. So thank you, uh, board, for your time this evening. Um, I represent Dr. Colin Fuller and his wife, Robin, who are the owners of the property. And uh, this is not my first time with them. We go back to, um, we go back seven years. So I've been representing them in the purchase of the property and the development of the property when it was a camp. Um, and we uh, came before this board for uh, approval of a tight tank. Uh, when Paula Champagne was uh, uh, the health agent, um, she was on the varsity and Megan was on the junior varsity and that has now moved up ably. Um, and we also uh, came before this board for a reconsideration of the previous variances um, to extend the seasonal um, uh, term somewhat and to include a loft area, um, which were granted. And there were also um, discussions with Paula, and Paula agreed that um, the, the pullers could have a futon in the property. And that's documented in emails from Paula. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear all that. A futon there where? Were, there were uh, a futon. Um, in the area, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, where the stairs are. Okay. That's correct. To the stairs. Um, so, in any event, um, including a variance from the Board of Appeals for a, very, for, for a one car um, garage on the property. So, Dr. Fuller, who is a um, Medical doctor now has a sorry, condition. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Somebody's making a lot of noise, shuffling papers or something. Yeah. Um, and Colin, I'm if you sorry. click on mute, click on the mute button so that we we won't hear you. Sorry, unless... I'm having trouble. <laughs> all right. And Thank Robin, you. the same. Yeah, I'm all set. Click where it says mute. Okay. Yeah. Good, thank you. So that should reduce some of it. Thank um, you, I'm sorry. All right. So I I believe as part of the site summary that you have a copy of the letter that Dr. Fuller sent to the board on April 29th. Has everybody had a chance to look at that or read it? I believe so. It was in okay. our packet. So, um, just in a nutshell, uh, Dr. Fuller has been diagnosed with a serious brain condition um, and, and uh, metastatic melanoma. And he has a letter from his doctor, which I would like to read um, so that the board has an idea of what his medical doc, what his doctor is, is saying that he needs to have in order to uh, exercise properly and and balance is a big issue so this is all about safety for dr fuller and hopefully cooperation from this board but the the letter from his um doctor says that and, and bear with me i'll just read it to you mr colin fuller is a patiently currently under my care he was diagnosed in march of 2018 with stage four melanoma with metastasis to his brain, lung, liver, bones, and lymph nodes. In March of 2018, he had a resection of his left frontal brain tumor at Stanford, which confirmed his diagnosis of metastatic desmoplastic melanoma. His treatments included radiation therapy to his brain and immuno, immuno, immunotherapy, sorry, which he is still receiving. One of the side effects of 
immunotherapy is musculoskeletal toxicity. Toxicity. Mr. Mr. Fuller has moderate degree of um, side effects of these side effects and has been managed, which have been managed with exercise and medications. While on vacation in Howard back in 2019, the patient had trouble maneuvering this, the ship's ladder. He has had multiple falls at home due to change in his depth perception. For safety reasons, it is medically advised that the patient make some adjustment to his existing home to allow him to continue daily stretching and other exercises as part of his treatment for stage four melanoma. These activities are very prudent for his safety and recovery. It is my hope that you will follow him. You allow him the ability to modify his second floor loft areas at 26 Kevin Road in Howard to meet these needs. And that's from Dr. Regente. Uh, so we are simply asking the board to take into consideration this very human situation that exists so that Dr. Fuller can um, exercise when he's here in Harwich at his home, which is, um, uh, I live down the street and it's a delightful um, house that has been built there. And the ship's ladder is dangerous as indicated uh, for him to go up and down, but he very, very much needs to engage in these stretching exercises. And Bob Stello can give you, if you want, some of the, the building changes that would have to take place to put in a stairway as opposed to a ship's ladder. And I know the board um, would be concerned about um, uh, having to monitor what's going on there, either by the Fullers or somebody that they sell to, or if Dr. Fuller passed away, you know, who's going to be living there and are we making this access too accessible on the loft and it becomes a bedroom and you don't want to be bedroom police and, and all of that. We know all of that. But this is a very serious condition that he has and it would be, as Rob Stello can tell you, it's going to cost significant money to make these changes, including changes to the electrical system um, it's not something that he would want to be just granted, even if the board saw fit, for just for him and then undo it afterwards, because we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars um, to make this renovation for his safety. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this, this would be in place of the futon. It's in that area, and the futon would go away. And we'd just be talking about a storage area with a restriction that says no sleeping, storage only, but stretching is allowed um, with safety with a stairway. So that's that's what we're asking the board to do. Um, with all due respect to the health agent's recommendation, we're asking the board to look at the human side of this and and cooperate with Dr. Fuller and his renovate proposed renovation of his house. Thank you. Thank you. And he is ready to, he is willing to give some testimony on his own behalf this evening. And if you have some questions, uh, maybe Rob could now speak and, and uh, give you an idea of what the changes to the structure would involve. So Rob. Yeah, is it, is it okay to speak? All right. Um, a few things. Number one is um, this is not the first house I built for the Fullers, the second one. So I know they are talking about it, something should happen to, um, Dr. Fuller and stuff, but I mean, you know, obviously to talk about, but I, his family, they've been coming here for a long time, so I'm pretty sure this house was made to stay in the family, and they all enjoy it here, and they spend a lot of time here when they can, you know, and I, um, so I don't think this is any, like, short-term thing. The problem with the um, stairway is that we look at this at different angles, and uh, we try to find alternatives and um, go through what we kept running into, and this is where the cost went up, was no matter what we did, we ended up talking to the electrical inspector, and we talked to the building inspector, and there was no other alternative because they didn't want to get rid of that futon room. They didn't want to, because when you go upstairs, it's an open loft. I mean, there is no wall separating it. It's more than six feet. It's got slanted ceilings. I mean, 
and it's got a walkway from one side to the other. And uh, there is actually two sides when you go up stay at the stairs. They go up to the loft. There's a left. There's a closet. And there's like a little open area where the um, Renai hot water tank is. Then you walk across this walkway, and then that's where the other room is. And it's all wide open. Now what's going to have to happen is that, you know, that closet's coming out because um, we have to get the stairway up. And what happens with the closet uh, you know, when we take this out, is that the stairway, the way we have it, it just, because, you know, we couldn't just put in any steps, it's going to be unsafe again, and, you know, because of the cost, we're looking at it, but it defeats the purpose. You really need something that he can walk up comfortably by himself, so he can go up there and, you know, do his exercises. The house is a very small house. Some people have said, well, can you use a living room and stuff? If you could be in that house, you would see, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, he's going to spend time taking the pot, putting it back together, putting the equipment somewhere, and there really isn't much room. The bedroom is really small. It's there. Small bathroom, small kitchen. It just is not any more room accessible. And we looked. And the reason why is because, number one, as you're coming up the stairs, it's, um, it really compromises what the code says about the electrical service. So we have to go down the bottom of it, take all the plywood out, and we're going to move that electrical service to another place in the house because you know, they want three feet in front of it. We try to talk to the inspector and the building inspector, um, both electrical and builder, about um, trying to bring it down to the platform, have it really close. But, you know, especially in the conditions and the situation, I mean, like I said, it's really not accessible. And, you know, they're willing to try to help us out a little bit, but it really doesn't make any sense. So the only thing that really makes sense is to do this, which means that you're not just moving the electrical. You've got a main beam that comes across that is, you know, petitioning the um, walkway from the two rooms, and that's going to be all readjusted, reframed. So this is not a, a small project um, because it's going to be more permanent, and um, there's no other way of doing it. That's, I guess, basically. If you have any other, you know, constructional costs, or, I mean, questions, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. Could we, uh, uh, Madam Ch Chairperson, uh, hear from Dr. Fuller? Is that okay? All right. I'm, I'm that talking yes. to myself. Um, yes, that's fine. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Colin. Um, uh, first of all, I'm a lucky man. I'm thankful for each day of life. Three years ago, as Bill Crow just mentioned, I was diagnosed with metastatic melanoma with metastases to my brain, liver, lungs, spleen, lymph nodes, bones, and other places. Before that, I was functional. I was functioning as an interventional cardiologist, putting in stents in the arteries that were blocked at night, and people having heart attacks. Two years before that, I in 2016, I qualified for and ran the Boston Marathon. Suddenly, instead of saving lives, I needed someone to save my life. And they did that at Stanford. The treatment was brain surgery, radiation to the brain and elsewhere, immunotherapy, as Bill pointed out. Immunotherapy is that enhances your immune system rather than depress it, which happens with chemotherapy. And love. Extreme amounts of love for my wife, Robin. Exercise. There's data that exercise helps your body fight cancer. And lastly, importantly, prayer. Today, after those therapies, according to the most recent scans, it have been negative for 20 months now. I'm free of melanoma. That happens in not as maybe ten percent of people getting immunotherapy. So I feel very fortunate about that. Initially, due to the original lesion and then subsequent surgery and radiation to the brain, I had significant memory and speech loss, and also balance issues. My initial presentation was balance falling into the walls. They've all improved. Speech and the memory is almost back to normal. Balance has gotten quite a bit better, secondary to uh, balance exercises. But, you know what BOSU balls are? I, every morning I stand on a BOSU ball for maybe half an hour. And what I found is that's reprogramming my brain to get better balance and leg, leg strengthening exercises. 
such that presently I'm able to do what we call ADL, activities of daily living, and more. But going down that chip's ladder is another. Going up it, it's not so bad, but it's going down it is the issue. One fall to one side or the other, and it will be a tragic fall. So why am I here before you? Ask for your kind consideration to allow us to put a normal stairs in in place of the ship's ladder so I may maintain access to the lot for both storage and exercise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm going to close the hearing and uh, want to give you recommendations so then we'll have a board discussion. Are there any questions from the board members, Madam Chairperson? Um, if, if you could all mute your phones, I think Kim has asked for my board and we will have a board discussion. Exactly. Thank you. Um, so I would like to read an email that Mr. Kroll had mentioned from Paula Champagne. Um, this is from sometime in 2016, it does not have a date on it. It is in regards to um, the request to change the seasonal restriction. And there was a, a mention of a, of a bed in the alcove. And I think that's what um, we were just, was discussed by Mr. Kroll. Um, and to be clear, Paula reads, uh, writes, Advisory, quote, just so you know, I have been informed that there are now beds in the alcove by the stairs to the loft. Need I remind you that this is a one bedroom deed restriction. I told you earlier on that you're no longer on North Beach and eyes everywhere. I will give you the courtesy of removing them if this is indeed the case and not request an inspection. The Board of Health was adamant about this floor plan and reluctant to even grant the loft, which they believed did not pass the straight face test. I hope that you can work within the guidelines of the restrictions and the Board of Health will not be forced to revisit this case for possible further restrictions such as demolition of access to the loft or a two-person occupancy restriction. Granting of variances and use restrictions are based upon the understanding and, accept and acceptance of mutual trust. Regards, Paula Champagne. Um, I read that into the record only because um, there was talk of beds in the alcove and the feeling that they were um, approved or accepted as being able to be used, and that that is not in fact the case. Um, this property, as we have heard, was a cabin, um, a very rustic cabin, utilizing a cesspool, um, had, had a, a well water uh, for, for potable water. And in 2013, this this family requested to demolish that and 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 construct a one-bedroom seasonal cottage. Um, it is in a zone two, it's in a water recharge area, and it is served by a tight tank because there is absolutely no space for a conventional Title V system. The majority of the property is within 100 feet of the edge of the pond. Seasonal restrictions were reconsidered in 2014 along with um, the loft area in 2013 and at that time the board can I just ask Mr. Stello to mute I'm getting some feedback and I can't hear again I'm sorry okay thank you um the I have been in this home um with Paula Champagne because of 
um, complaints that the second story, the, the loft area was not being used for just storage. And the Board of Health restriction from the variance approval included that the loft storage area was just to be used for loft and storage space. So not only are we requesting at this point to access it with a staircase rather than a ship's ladder, but we're also requesting to use that space as habitable space. Um, and I wanna just share my screen with you so you can look at the floor plan. Um, I think, can you all see this? Um, Jen, nod your head if you can see my screen. Okay, all right. So it, it, I'm sorry it's sideways because I can't figure out how to reverse it. Um, hang on. This space here that I'm circling is a living space that has the ship's ladder in it here. Loft area is this, this is the second floor or the loft area accessed by the ship's ladder. What is being requested is to change out that living space with a store with a staircase upholding previous board of health restrictions and conditions of only accessing this by a ship's ladder and not increasing any habitable space or using that second loft that second story loft as habitable space can't recommend approval of the request this staircase here that you're looking at quite large um, and if it remains the way it is without one you still have this space if we need to do exercises in I believe is an adequate amount of space to do that in and that is um, that's my my recommendation is to not approve this request Any comments from the board? I noticed on that drawing that there was a rather large sunroom. It, it, it was sideways, but I, I, I think that's what I saw. Was that correct? And I guess if, if it is, my question is, why couldn't that be used for exercising? Which I would think would eliminate having to use steps at all. May I answer? Yes, please. Um, first of all, um, that e part of that room is dining room. And then we have a large sofa in there with a TV. So there's very little room in there for exercise. I can use for exercise, but I also need access to the second, to the loft for storage. As Bob Stella's pointed out, it's a small play house, and we use the second, the loft area for storage. So I need access for storage to, to get things that we need for daily living. So it's not just for exercise, but it's also right, for access. I have a question there, though. However, if, if your issue is balance, Yes. All right. Then why couldn't your wife or someone else be the one to be going up there? It, it, to me, it doesn't seem like that would be the smartest thing for you to do for your own safety. My, my wife still works, so I'm there alone most of the time. And what would you need to go up there for for storage if you were using the other room as some exercise? Uh, we have clothes up there, cooking pots. Um, things for ski, uh, sailing, things for swimming. So 
there are many things we store up there because there's not much storage on the first floor. And if I could correct something, if I may, something Meg had said earlier, where there was a complaint about beds in the alcove. Paula came over the next day, and what was in there was the futon that's there still today. And the futon was in, misinterpreted as a bed. And Paula agreed over time, the put, and she had told my wife and I originally, a futon was acceptable because she knew people would come and visit and be placed for them for a couple of days to sleep. Um, and the futon with the new stairs going in will have to be out of the house. We'll have to sell it. So I wanted to correct Megan that it wasn't beds in the alcove. The alcove is very small. It was a futon in the alcove. And Paula saw it the next day and she agreed that she had told Robin and I earlier that that was acceptable. If I may, Madam Chairperson. Yes. Um, just, I, I don't think that um, allowing the loft to be used for storage and exercising makes it uh, rise to the level of being habitable space. If the board puts that limitation on it, that it's storage and exercise only, um, and the futon leaves, then uh, it seems to me it's not habitable space at that point. Um, maybe I misunderstood. I thought there were going to be electrical lines to the uh, loft. Can I speak to that? Maybe I misunderstood. Sure. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's Bob Stello again. A couple things I wanted to bring up. One is, um, no, what I said was that the stairs um, compromises the um, electric, um, the main panel. And we have to move that panel to get out of the way because of, you know, there's building codes with the stairs and where a electrical panel could sit. And there was some co electrical code issues. And that's why we have to move it. I mean, obviously, it's adding a cost, but that's how... I say vital it is to have a good um, set of stairs. I've heard the comment about it being a, um, a you know, a, the large staircase or whatever to go up there, but I want to point out that that staircase was just barely fit in to fit code. So there wasn't any, I mean, no matter what we do, I mean, the last thing I can do is build something that's not um, code driven. And then if he falls and gets hurt, I mean, that would really be a liability. So this is designed and made and we just barely, you got it to fit in. So there is no new lines going up there. There is no um, new wall that's going to okay, separate rooms you, or any man. of that kind of stuff, you know? Any questions? How, how big is the uh, alcove? What's the size of the alcove where the futon is? Um, I believe it's like, hold on, um, I got it right here. There's another thing I wanted to point out. If you're worried about like um, space and you're talking about what you can put in this alcove and what you can put upstairs, I mean, the irony kind of, for me anyways, is that you're actually eliminating one possibility you could have anything there because that room is going to be all staircase. So there's nothing that is going to be able to even fit in there, you know, number one. The, um, that room where the alcove is, see the second floor, first floor. It's seven feet, eight inches wide. And um, let me see, the length is, let's see, four. The, the length is like 10 feet, two inches, but it's a little deceiving because of where the wall is and you're interfering in the kitchen. So let's say, if you want to look at it, I guess you're, you're seven foot eight inches by probably like nine and a half feet. It's very small. That's why the, the, the stairway just fits into it to make to work. Because you need a 36 inches, you know, between the two, uh, between the rails. 
So you get up 36, 36, that's six feet, and then you get up space for your rails, which, you know, probably at least, you know, probably another six inches, so there's another foot. So that's where the measurements come in. That room is going to be totally used up. Oh, I don't, yeah, I just meant now. Yeah, that's what it is right now. Okay. And if I may, the, the space upstairs doesn't change at all, correct? Well, it really, it really, it does because the, when you walk up the stairs of the, um, you know, we got, a, there's a closet in there that's got to come out. So we're going to try to put one, because one thing that I know you talked about why he has to go upstairs is, um, I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, they do well what they do, but if you look at this, there's only two real small, small closet spaces in that um, house. One's in the bedroom, and there's another one that's into this little um, alcove that we're going to be putting the stairway in. So they're going to lose that one. So they're going to need more storage, or they're going to, you know, have less storage on the first floor, and so it's all going to be upstairs. So there's really, I don't think um, Colin pointed that out, but there's, not, there's even less room for them to try to put their everyday stuff in. But when the staircase goes in, what we're going to do, we're going to be taking off. There's a uh, one closet up there. It's like a six-foot closet. That's going to have to come out. And we're going to try to put it on the other side, but it won't be six feet. It's going to be less because what we got to do is when we, the stairwell, the way it comes up, we had to try to make it so it's centered because, you know, we don't want anybody, you know, with the, so it's centered. It goes right on the walkway so we can walk down that um, better without having to maneuver too much. Madam Chairperson, one, one last comment, if I may? Yes. Um, if Dr. Fuller were healthy, didn't have this medical condition, he would be, he could be using that law for storage and for exercise, stretching anyway. The request is being made because the, the only thing that's changed is his health and being able to negotiate the ship's ladder. So he could already do those activities under the current restrictions. I would think the board would not have a problem with somebody exercising in a storage area. The only thing that's changed is his health condition. So he's asking to allow for the stairs, but not change the activities that he could already do up there. We're asking the board to take into consideration his significant change in health and look out for his safety when he exercises in the loft. Thank no, you. I understand that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I only have one, one comment to that. Um, I think by putting in a permanent staircase makes it a lot easier eventually to be used as another bedroom or more habitable space. Having said that, um, and I can appreciate the position he's in, but when I look at that sunroom and I look at the size of that sunroom, I would think that that would have been a lot easier to use that as an exercise room than to go through all of what you're talking about, moving electric and putting in a staircase to exercise upstairs, which is still an issue for someone that has a balance problem. It just seems to me if that's the major concern is his safety and having a place to exercise, then I think that sunroom, to me, would be a more logical place. That's just my opinion. Can I speak to that? Can I um, say, say something to that? Go ahead, Bob. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to say was I um, looking at a floor plan like this is really very, very deceiving. Um, I know you're looking at the size of it and everything, but, you know, there's a couple things. And the reason I'm bringing this up because I've had some, unfortunately, medical issues myself as well. And uh, I think one point that you're missing is that you can sit down and say that all day long. But the bottom line is this. When he says it's a dining room, the kitchen and stuff, you look at the floor plan, the way it's laid out. But I'm telling you that if you look at where his island is and, and everything, in other words, he's got a permanent um, um, table in there because obviously that's where they sit and they eat to look out the water and they, that's where their, um, the dining room is. There's a, there's a dining room table there. When you go into the sunroom, you, you know, he's got his couch that goes around, the TV, 
Um, so what you're basically looking at, it's, you, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how little space there is there. So now you've got a situation where the gentleman has to go in, pick up everything, move stuff out of the way. People are trying to use the house. I mean, there's such a small living space there, and it really is. I mean, you know, what I'm saying is you're constantly trying to maneuver, to have a place that you can put your stuff, leave your stuff, be out of everybody's way, especially in his condition. Um, and, you know, I'll be honest with you, stairs themselves are a good exercise and for balance and everything. And that's why we talked about doing what we were going to do and how we're going to put the rail. I mean, this is no, you know, this isn't for the faint of heart. I mean, this is costing them some money, but it's the only way I would really do this project to be safe for them. So I think you're taking all those things into consideration. I mean, it all sounds really good, and I appreciate what you're trying to say, but I'm just telling you the reality is, is that there really isn't, and having a place that you can go with all your equipment sitting there, you can you don't have to worry about tripping over it, anybody else moving it. I mean, it's a small space. I, I have to tell you, I just don't think that that's really viable, but I, I'm not going to be able to change your mind, but I'm just telling you there's another side to that one for sure. But thank you for my opinion. Um, Thank you. May I comment, please? Uh, yes. I, I'm also interested in maintaining access to the second floor to the things that are stored there. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? No. Do I hear a motion to accept? Um, I'm figuring out how to say it. Megan has uh, felt it should not be approved. Do I hear a motion to that effect? Do I hear a motion to allow the staircase to be built? I'll make a motion. Rhonda okay. Gallo. Do I hear a second? Ron, can you clarify your motion, please? I would, uh, let's see. Uh, allow the staircase to be built. I I would second the motion to allow the staircase to be built. Okay, Kevin, um, you would allow it to be built. Um, I will do a roll call. Sharon, are you in agreement with the staircase to be built? No. Ron, are you in agreement for the staircase to be built? Yes. Matt, are you in agreement with the staircase to be built? Um, at this time, I'm split. Um, I really feel like uh, a little bit more oversight would be needed on Meg's behalf, so I'm going to say no. You do, you do not agree that the staircase should be built? Yes. Okay, and um, Kevin, you, you had agreed for the staircase to be built? Yes. Um, and um, I do agree that the staircase should not be built. So I think it's three to two, not in favor of the stair staircase to be built. Correct. I thank the board for um, time and consideration. Thank you. Okay, the second hearing we have on our agenda is for Skaheen for Lantern Lane to consider a variance request to upgrade a Title V septic system prepared by Dan A. Speakman Construction. Variances from 310 CMR 15 211 minimum setbacks 
to allow a, t a proposed soil absorption system to be seven feet from the property line where 10 feet is required, variance request of three feet, and to allow a soil absorption system to be 10 feet from the foundation where 20 feet is required, variance request of 10 feet. Hi, Dan. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, so as Megan just said, you know, we're requesting these variances and so forth. This is a typical situation where you have a small lot and not enough room to uh, conform to the setbacks. I think we did the best we could with this situation and um, we're requesting these variances. Pam, you're on mute. I was wondering why nobody answered. <laughs> Megan, could I hear your, rep your um, opinion on uh, this? Sure. Recommendation? Um, <laughs> this is a um, an application to replace a failed septic system due to real estate transfer. Um, the existing septic system is not operational and it needs to be replaced. They aren't proposing any increases in habitable space at this point um, and a upgraded system which will contain an H20 1500 gallon tank and a pump chamber distribution box and soil absorption system um, for a three bedroom home is a, a improvement over what's there now. And I recommend approval of the variances as requested with the conditions that the property is restricted to three bedrooms maximum, that there's no increase in square footage or habitable space without further review by the board, and that the variances and conditions be recorded at the Barnstable County Registry of Deeds. Um, before I ask for anything else, uh, Jennifer, while I was on mute, I closed the hearing. <laughs> Okay, um, do I hear a motion to um, accept Megan's um, proposal? I'll make a motion to accept the proposed proposal. Sharon uh, makes a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. second. Um, was that Matt? Who said, I'm sorry, I don't know who said that. I know I, two people did. Ron and I both did. Oh, okay. <laughs> At the exact same time. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I, mean, I um, Kevin made the motion for a second. And uh, I'll do a roll call if all in agreement. Sharon, are you in agreement? Yes. Um, Ron, are you in agreement? Yes. Matt, are you in agreement? Yes. Kevin, are you in agreement? Yes. And I'm in agreement, so it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Good Have night. a good night. You too. Thank you. Okay, the next um, hearing we have is for 47 North Road, on um, behalf of the owner, Tom Smith is applying for variances for 310 CMR Title V uh, State Environmental Code. This exact variance application came before the Board of Health in May of, 20, of 2019. The variances being requested are exactly the same as they were then, which were approved with conditions. However, Variances are only valid for six months unless a permit to install the system is applied for, and that did not happen. And so the variances that were previously approved had expired, and now um, Mr. Smith is requesting the same variances as before uh, for both this property and for the next hearing at 52 North Road um, to get you up to speed. This property is along Herring River um, and is on a, a very small lot and 
the variances requested for 47 North Road include installing a tight tank rather than a conventional Title V system and to allow a 1,000 gallon tank rather than a 2,000 gallon tank. And then setbacks being requested are to be three feet from the property line with the tight tank instead of seven and to be 7.9 feet from a foundation where 10 feet is required to allow the tight tank to be 4.5 feet from a water line where 10 feet is required and to be a, uh, four feet from a wetland where 51 feet is required. Um, two other, three other variances that were applied for then as they are now uh, to allow the inlet T to be less than one foot above the high groundwater elevation and to allow the tight tank to be four feet the, and then two, two variants um, requests from the town of Harwich regulations and instead of Title V would be uh, the wetland setback four feet um, rather than, than 50 and to allow the building sewer to be six feet from a wetland where 50 is required. Um, the existing dwelling contains one bedroom and is used seasonally. The um, board approved the variances in May of 2019 and recommended, and, and at that time, the conditions that were recommended and approved were that the property is restricted to one bedroom, that there be no increase in habitable space or square footage to the property, uh, to the dwelling. Um, it's limited to seasonal use of six months per year, enforced by water shutoff. Um, an operation and maintenance agreement for the tight tank be in place um, and that these conditions be rec recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Um, do I hear a motion? Um, um, Mr. Smith is here on the, on the call, the owner. Oh. Well, yes. Hi, Megan. I, I, don't think I, could, I don't think I could present it any better. Um, the only thing I had a question about is six month use. Um, I never heard anything about that. I thought it was a year round use for the one bedroom unit at 47. Uh, no, uh, tight tanks are only approved for seasonal use. Um, that's per Title V. That was the condition placed like, two years ago, year and a half. And it would it would need to be the same now. Okay, got it. Um, with that said, um, it's it's as it was in 2019. There's no difference, and I'd like to uh, seek an approval from the board on that. Approval for what? Approval for the same thing that was already accepted in 2019. Oh, the restrictions and the variances? Yes, correct. Okay, okay. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Nope. Um, do I hear a motion to accept recommendations and restrictions in outlined? Make a motion. Um, motion was passed, uh, initiated by Matt. And uh, do I hear a second? Second. Ron seconded it. Um, we'll do a roll call. Sharon, are you in agreement with this? I'm sorry. Yes. I got a yes. headache. <laughs> I <find> my own <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt, are you in agreement? Yes. And uh, Ron, are you in agreement? Yes. And Kevin, are you in agreement? Yes. And I'm in agreement, so it's passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we'll do the um, second. In the second. The last hearing is also for um, 52 North Road, which is the same situation um, where these variance requests were reviewed and approved by the Board of Health in April of 2019. 
Um, this is the property across the street from the one that you just approved. This property is large enough to have a, a Title V system on it. Um, and the variances that are being requested are to allow a proposed pump chamber to be seven feet from the property line instead of 10 feet, to allow a septic tank and pump chamber invert to be less than one foot above the high groundwater elevation, and to allow the proposed soil absorption system to be 87 feet from the edge of the wetland where 100 feet is required. Um, currently, the property is served by a cesspool, and that there and there is currently no plans to increase habitable space or the number of bedrooms. Um, ha that having been said, um, I recommend the same approval as we had in 2019, with the condition that it be restricted to a maximum of two bedrooms, which is existing now. Um, no increase in habitable space or or the number of bedrooms without further review by the board and that the conditions be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. And Mr. Smith is still on. Yeah, on. Mr. Smith, you have. Yeah, and, and again, I concur with Megan and uh, exactly what she said. That's all we're looking for. Okay, thank you. Um, do I hear a motion to accept the uh, variances and the conditions uh, proposed by Megan? I'll make a motion. Okay, Ron, Ron makes, makes a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. second. Oh, go ahead. Sharon will second. Do roll call, uh, Sharon, you're in agreement? Yes. And um, Ron, you're in agreement? Yes. And Matt, you're in agreement? Yes. Kevin, you're in agreement? Yes. And I'm in agreement, so motion has passed unanimously. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Have a good night. Uh, that's the end of your agenda, unless there's something that you wanted to go back and talk about. I just have one, like, off question. Are we going to get a copy of the fertilizer, the, the final um, version of that fertilizer thing for Friday? I, I believe it's been emailed to you already. It was a separate email. Okay. The one that has uh, January 22nd on it. All right, I'll I'll double check that because I I was yeah. looking for it, so I could, I could have easily missed it. Trust me. <laughs> I believe yeah, it's I, already I posted it. on the on the website as well, so you could also go there and download it. All right, all right, not a problem. <laughs> That's it for me. Anything okay. else? I make a motion we adjourn. Okay. Do I hear a sa second? Second. Ron seconds it. Sharon made the motion. Um, Matt, are you in agreement? Yes. And Kevin, are you in agreement? Yes. And I'm in agreement. So the meeting's adjourned. All right. All right. Good night. See you uh, Friday. See you Friday. Okay, do, you a, yep. do you have a minute once um it stopped recording? Sure. I don't know. Has it stopped recording? Uh hang on. <laughs>